Jim Elliott was born in Portland, Oregon in 1927. He became a missionary to Ecuador, where in 1956 he was killed while trying to minister to the Huarani people group. He once said that, I only hope that he will let me preach to those who have never heard that name Jesus. What else is worthwhile in this life? I have heard of nothing better. Lord, send me. Another missionary, Lottie Moon, was born to an affluent family in 1840. She would serve in China for 39 years as a single woman. She would die in 1912 on her way back from the mission field due to health problems that were directly related to giving away her food and belongings to aid the people she was ministering to. She once reflected, How many there are who imagine that because Jesus paid it all, they would pay nothing, forgetting that the prime object of their salvation was that they should follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ in bringing back a lost world to God. These missionaries and several more throughout history have all devoted giving their life to the spread of the gospel to people who had never heard it before. This video seeks to provide an answer for what would make people give their lives so that other people around the world can hear about Jesus by answering three questions. The first question is, why does missions exist? The second question is, should Christians participate in missions? And finally, how can Christians get involved with missions? The first question we have is, why does missions exist? Well, in his book, Let the Nations Be Glad, Supremacy of God and Missions, John Piper says that missions exist because worship doesn't. The goal of Christians is to glorify God through all that we do. A way that this is accomplished is by spreading his glory to the corners of the earth, by sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection to sinners who have not heard this good news. The Lord even provides us with a game plan of how this can be accomplished through scripture. In Matthew 28, 18-20, Matthew writes that Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Also, in Acts 1.8, Luke writes that before the ascension of Jesus, he told his followers, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Above all else, we should realize that missions exist because God wants us to glorify him through sharing the gospel to people who have not heard it yet. In this way, God is most glorified by sharing, spreading the gospel to all corners of the earth. The next question we should have about missions is, should Christians actually participate in missions? After all, we may foolishly think that, aren't there enough missionaries? There's a church on every street corner of my neighborhood. So, does the gospel really need to be spread? David Platt, in his book Radical, summarizes our responsibility well. He says that, every saved person this side of heaven owes the gospel to every lost person this side of hell. According to the Joshua Project, those lost people comprise 42.4 of the earth's population as unreached. This means that if they were to die today, they will have never heard the name of Jesus, let alone the gospel. That's roughly 3.36 billion people worldwide. Of the earth's population, approximately 5.27 billion people live in what is referred to as the 1040 window. This is an area of North America, the Middle East, and Asia, where the majority of the world's Hindus, Buddhists, and Muslims live. These are the world's least evangelized countries. So, based on the numbers, every Christian should participate in missions however possible. The third and final question that we have as Christians is how can we get involved in missions? There are three specific ways that Christians can get involved. The first is to pray. The father of modern missions, William Carey, said to expect great things, attempt great things. So by praying to God for great things to happen, we can expect that that great things will happen because he is a great God. As Christians, there's no, nothing more important or powerful that we can do than to pray. Christians can pray for missionaries, unreached people groups, and even their own personal role in fulfilling the Great Commission. There are several resources to provide help with prayer topics. Perhaps the most popular and most beneficial to me is Operation World, the definitive prayer guide for every nation. 
The second way for Christians to be involved in missions is to give. By donating to the Lottie Moon Christmas Offering, 100% of the proceeds go to the International Mission Board, or IMB, their missionaries on the ground spreading the gospel. The Annie Armstrong Easter Offering through the North American Mission Board, or NAM, helps plant and support churches throughout North America. Finally, the third way that Christians can get involved with missions is to simply go. The IMB and the Association of Baptists for World Evangelism, or ABWE, are regularly looking for missionaries to send and fulfill the Great Commission through short-term and long-term missions. When considering whether or not you should consider getting involved with the spread of the gospel, going back to Lottie Moon, who probably said it best, a young man should ask himself not if it is his duty to go to the heathen, but if he may dare stay at home. The command is so plain. Go.